So hello everyone and welcome to the Cadre Journal. I'm Joseph and I'm very excited to have with me members of the Kenyan Young Communist League. And if you'd all like to start, I don't know what the best order would be to go and perhaps uh, come on Brian if you wanna begin and then we can go down the line and everyone just introduce themselves briefly. Okay, comrade, uh, thank you very much. And uh, we are very honored to be part of uh, this interview. Uh, so much regard to the Kada Journal. Uh, we are the Young Communist League of Kenya. Uh, under the Communist Party of Kenya, the youth wing of the, of the Communist Party of Kenya. Uh, beside, uh, beside me and uh, uh, also uh, in this interview are uh, you know, members from the Central Committee where I serve as the Secretary General. Uh, we have the uh, chairperson who will uh, be the first to introduce themselves. Then uh, we can uh, have the National Vice Chairperson introduce themselves. Then we have the Treasurer and the Secretary of Ideology in that order. Thank you very much. I'm Brian, the Secretary General. Thank you. Thank you, comrades. I hope you can hear me. Oh, thank you. So my name is Mwaivu Wakaluka, and I'm the National Chairperson of the Young Communist League, which is the youth wing of the Communist Party of Kenya. Thank you. Uh, greetings, my comrades. Uh, my name is Warenga Wahome, uh, currently sitting as the National Vice Chairperson of the Young Communist League. Um, revolutionary greetings once again. My name is. Am I clear? Oh, okay. My name is Ajiam Ashling. I'm the sitting national treasurer of the Young Communist League, and I'm glad to be part of this session today. Thank you. Salute, dear comrades. I'm Kinuti Andongo the Secretary of Ideology for the Young Communist League. I'm looking forward to this conversation. Thanks so much, comrades. It's a pleasure to have everyone. And it's so nice to meet everyone personally as well. Um, I'm very excited to kind of make these connections and make the connections from communists in the US and in the rest of the world with uh, US Young Communists from Kenya. I'd like to begin, and perhaps the best way we can do this is if everyone wants to jump in on the question. I don't know, we can do however the order is, it, it's not a big deal, but um, the first question would just be a little bit of the history of the Young Communist League. I know it was founded somewhat recently uh, as well, along with the, the Communist Party of Kenya. Um, so I'd like to ask how the Young Communist League was started and also the driving ideology behind it why it's important to get young people involved in communist organizing and politics, especially students and, um, you know, engaged as, as cadres in a revolutionary party. Um, so I go into the best order, perhaps we can kind of do that same order again, if you'd like, and just a little bit about how the Young Communist League was started and the driving ideology behind it. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mulen. Um, uh, coming in is uh, to you know uh, to give a historical contextualization that uh, you know from uh, you know, Kenya exists as a class society, just as uh, you know we get from uh, the historical uh, you know the historical and philosophical contributions of different philosophers that uh, the world has existed as a class society, and uh, you find that Kenya is not an exemption. And uh, you know, for, uh, you know, we, uh, you're from uh, colonialism. Uh, Kenya has, uh, you know, has, has uh, you know, has had struggles and political struggles that uh, you know uh, that uh, develop into a revolutionary uh, uh, political uh, reconstitution of the society, because uh, attempts, you know, to get from oppression, uh, you know, uh, to get from oppression and uh, of course uh, exploitation that uh, you know has uh, had Kenya, you know, uh, in the in the past. 
you know, got people and, uh, you know, groups of people, then the majority of the population organizing, you know, towards that revolutionary action from colonialism. So organizing can be traced, you know, uh, from, uh, you know, historically, from, uh, you know, developments such as those ones. And uh, from colonialism, we have had, um, we have had uh, different, you know, uh, from colonialism, we have had uh, different political struggles, ranging from, you know, the struggle, you know, the, the struggle for multipartism, you know, the, you know, which, uh, you know, had a lot of people being arrested, you know, because of participating in these struggles, you know, and, um, and, 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 and uh, you know, uh, such scenarios. So uh, the, the Young Communist League was also inspired by such conditions that uh, you, you find that majority of the young people are uh, unemployed, you know, are, you know, majority of the young people are suffering from state uh, repression, you know, uh, narrowing from uh, uh, extrajudicial executions, you know, to crime and, uh, and problem and, 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 such, uh, and, and such social problems. So inspired by that one, uh, uh, um, <coughs> Uh, the Communist Party initially used to exist as the Social Democratic Party until in 2019 when it transformed to the to, uh, to the to the um, to the Communist Party of Kenya. You know because uh, you know, because of ideological reasons um, that, that uh, you know we we needed to proclaim ourselves Marxist and full Marxist. You know and uh, Marxism as a political practice. So that is when also the young, the Young Communist League transformed from the uh, from the Young Socialist League in 2019 December, you know, through the Congress. So uh, since then uh, we have been organizing towards, you know, different, uh, you know, the, the different social and political problems that uh, the Kenyan society face. And recently we had our Congress, our first uh, national Congress. Yes, thank you. Thank you, comrade. Would any other comrades like to jump in and answer that question? Just uh, Comrade Mullen, uh, of course, Brian has given a great historical contextualization of, of course, where uh, as the party and of course uh, the Young Communist League are coming from. And of course, he has noted that, of course, CPK is a continuation of the struggle that our people have always waged, uh, depending on the conditions they are, they are faced uh, at that particular time. And he has mentioned that historically, we've had the, the, the Mau Mau uh, revolutionary struggle. And even after the Mau Mau revolutionary struggle, we, we had the, uh, the struggle for, for multi-party, um, which a lot of students were, involved in and also at the time we did not have uh, an organized communist movement of course with the death of people like Pio Gama Pinto who are communists but you see CPK comes uh, at a time when our people are facing the brunt of of neoliberal policies because yeah we see with the onset of uh, with the onset of neoliberalism, then the youth have had to bear the brunt of uh, how this system. And as Brian has uh, put it correctly, that now we the CPK and especially the Young Communist League have been theorizing and also and also practicing. So with the with the registration of the party from the SDP, then also the young the, the, the youth league now became the young communist league, which is now the autonomous young uh, communist uh, organization in the communist party of of, of Kenya. Thanks so much, comrade. And, and anyone else on that question before we move on to the next question would like to contribute? Thank 
Okay. Yeah. If if no one else um, would like to contribute on that question, we can perhaps move on to the next one. Um, I, I wanted to ask a little bit about as well the the Young Communist League's theory of the cadre as well. And I had seen that on your Twitter, um, there was a there was a great tweet from the Communist Party of Kenya which said. Uh, the primary task of the cadres is to uphold the party, build the party, and take the party to the people. I wonder, especially as young communists, how this theory of the cadre is applied, because typically cadres are young, they have a lot of energy and enthusiasm. That's why we, as the Cadre Journal, are very enthusiastic specifically about young people engaging in communism throughout the world. And so I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the energy and enthusiasm that you as young Kenyans bring to the party specifically as cadres as well, engaging in a revolutionary structure to build the party and bring it to the people. Thank you. Maybe I can take that question. Oh, so the, uh, you've asked about the, the energy of the, of the youth, or the, the youth cadres in the party. And I can say that we understand that uh, all these things happen due to our material conditions and the, the youth in Kenya have been subjected to certain conditions. Uh, and we can see that even in the, in the voter apathy in the, in, in the recent bourgeois election where most youth did not participate in those bourgeois elections because they've been subjected to conditions where they don't have a belief in the system. But then if these youths are, have become disenchanted with this bourgeois election and they don't see a, a change from, from it. It was very important for us as the party to organize this youth into a vanguard now of the masses because we understand that we cannot carry any, any revolution or progressive politics without organizing this youth who, who are feeling that they've been left out by the system, the capitalist system. So that was the, the importance and the need of uh, organizing the youth. And that is why we now have a vanguard that represents the youth in the, in the party. And that is, that, those are some of the conditions that have subjected us to, 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 to come up with such organization where we can have now the youth to come and mobilize, so to come to try and raise their political consciousness. Because at the moment, the, the current system has tried to depoliticize everything. And we can see even the, the extent at which the NGOs have had on the, mostly the youth, they've tried and depoliticize everything. And so our, our main task has been to, to lend this economic struggle and give it its political character. Because at the moment, Kenya is still a new colonial state and we are still under the rule of finance capital. And the youth which make the, the largest percentage of our population have been rendered unemployed. And most of them have even gone to, into crime or to do other things because with the little industrialization, most of these youth who are, who are well-trained and with skills have not been absorbed into, into, into these industries. And most of these industries are um, European multinationals are US multinationals, and they've been continuing to, 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 to steal our resources, to even exploit our labor. And even the, if, you, if you see the current, uh, the current parties that have been contesting in the, in the 20, 2000, 2022 elections, most of them are still imperialist stooge. For example, uh, the, the one who has lost the election, Honorable Raila Odinga, has been funded by what we call the Brand Trust Foundation, which is an imperialist mining corporation that has been mining in Zimbabwe, in Zambia. So the, most of the youth in Kenya now are at least politically conscious, though not to that extent that they can they can be clear on some issues, but at least they they've, they 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 understand some of the and of the issues, and why we have tried to even encourage them because uh, because most of them have have declined to participate in these elections, 
we are trying to tell them that even participating in these elections, we may we may still win some some good things from from maybe parliamentary struggles, and that's why we have we have always conducted civic and public public education on why they should not uh, they should not shy away from these elections and why they should participate in these elections because we can in in participating in these elections we can we can be able to to sharpen the contradictions in our society we can also win some some amelioration for the for the workers in Kenya so the the importance of the the youth in the party is a is a is, this is a critical thing because we understand that without a, a vanguard party we can we can we can we cannot do anything without a vanguard party so it was important to organize the youth and that's why we have the young communist league which is a youth wing of the party Um, and I think to take up from what Comrade Moivo was saying is that um, the Communist Party in itself is the core of proletariat organizing. And um, young people have a huge task, particularly conscious young people have a very huge task, one being to learn and the other one being to educate the masses away from the Bujo outlook that has, a, of course, uh, with, a, with, a, with a neo-colonial and neoliberal government still taking power and holding on to its uh, own bourgeois positions, being that they have a very huge task to conscientize masses against that outlook. And then again, um, when you ask about where the energy of the young people comes from, it's obviously uh, correctly put by our comrade chair Moivu is that uh, it's from continuous struggle of organizing. You know, by having comrades participate in different uh, positions within uh, the Young Communist League and within the Communist Party of Kenya you know, having to get the, uh, a chance of popularizing the masses and sharpening different contradictions going on, you know, that vigor that comes from uh, participation in elections and continuous organizing keeps giving strength to comrades. And of course, continuous learning and um, ideal, uh, uh, you know, um, putting perspective, correct perspective to conditions also gives a very huge um, momentum to comrades to continue organizing. And of course, because uh, the different comrades within the Young Communist Leagues are involved in different facets of organizing. Uh, most co uh, we have comrades who are organizing within uh, peasant struggles. I think Comrade Ashlin will uh, indulge on such issues. We have comrades also who are participating in uh, organizing in a lumpen society. And we have uh, also comrades who are participating in the organizing differently in what we uh, term as uh, either productive or unproductive workers. And of course, um, you know, with the process of conscientizing and with the process of continuous learning and continuous struggle, we have to continually be, um, get morale from it, yes. Yeah, and perhaps uh, just, to, just to underline that, um, uh, that uh, you know, as brought out very clearly by the comrades who came before me, is that uh, uh, around the world uh, there is a militancy, you know, that is uh, reported, uh, you know, that is reportedly, you know, uh, or, uh, or, or, uh, or, or, you know, of course, uh, uh, associated with the with the youth. And generally, uh, in uh, every organization, in every political organization, the youth are uh, particularly, uh, you know, a very, uh, you know, a very important, uh, a very important facet of fabric in organizing. Because you find out that uh, even in political circles uh, around the world, you know, there is a militant around the uh, trade unions around the uh, political parties there's a militancy that is uh, that is reportedly you know uh, associated with the youth even even in the bourgeois uh, organizing and that is also the situation in Kenya that the youth are uh, you know the youth are are, 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 are uh, you know are, are a force of, uh, of mobilization you know but it lacks an organization and uh, I think that is why uh, the, the, the the youth league uh, you know uh, in the Communist Party of Kenya is important again you know we with the Kenyan conditions, as uh, Comrade Moivu has put it, uh, you know, it, it, it makes it very favorable for the communist ideas, you know, to be popular among even the even the masses and the youth, uh, particularly uh, because of the conditions that they are going through. So you get that, uh, you know, that energy is, uh, you know, when 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 we meet, 
and uh, discuss these ideas in an ideological perspective, you know, you know, contextualizing ideas, you know, it, get, it becomes very interesting and, uh, you know, very, very, very favorable for, for our organizing here in Kenya. So I think that the energy is generated from the from the point that you know we understand the society and uh, you know we are all uh, you know we are all inspired by uh, you know by by, by similar uh, or uh, we are all uh, we are all inspired by 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 a similar spirit to to, to change the society. And 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 then maybe to add on what my comrade uh, Brian has been saying, you know, whoever owns the youth then gains uh, the future. And the, uh, the young community, the Communist Party of Kenya, of course, realizes this. And uh, that is why the young people in the party have been uh, so committed uh, to organizing both in the urban areas, in the urban inf informal uh, settlements, and also in the peasant region and of course if you look at the instances in which uh, the state has cracked down on our organization you'll realize that it is the young people in the party who have uh, found themselves in the middle of, of of all this state repression the other day our comrades were arrested when we organized a demonstration against the the unscientific manner the government was 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 handling the 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 COVID nineteen pandemic. It is the young community. It is the young cadres in the party who are arrested. Uh, again, it, uh, the young the young communists in the the young cadres in the YCL were the ones who were arrested when the party uh, the party and uh, and our organization together with other mass organizations, of course. Yeah. Uh, organized in 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 in, in an urban uh, uh, settlement, uh, urban uh, urban settlement in 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 Kasarani, when they organized uh, against the high food prices, of course, uh, it is the young cadres who are arrested again. When the offices were raided by the state, you'd realize that it is the young cadres in the party who are arrested. So this tells you so much about the energy that the cadres have have put in organizing because of course the liberal democracy has failed and the youths have uh, youths uh, see no future you know and they've been seeking alternatives and that is where the young cadres, the young communist league has come in to to organize and also awaken their consciousness so that uh, they see the system for what it is and join us in organizing and also own the struggle in organizing an alternative. And I think this is where the power and the energy uh, of our movement comes from. Yeah. Thanks so much, comrade. And, and thank you all comrades for your contributions to that question. That was a very, very important discussion and showing kind of the impacts of a modern cadre on revolutionary politics, which are very important and how young people can get involved today with, with such energy and enthusiasm to push revolutionary politics forward. Um, so I, I think we can move on to the next question. There is a little bit of discussion with it uh, throughout that question, but I wanted to ask for those who are, who are watching, um, who may not know or, or follow Kenyan politics, the news came last night on more Western media that that Ruto had been declared the president. And I wanted to discuss with all of you kind of the reflections from this election period as it's still ongoing. And I think there was reports, I, I wonder if you can speak on this as well about the potential for violence to continue and for there to be disruptions after this election was declared over. But more to reflect rather than on a, a sort of liberal perspective on electoral politics, but instead on a, a revolutionary perspective about the failures of bourgeois parliamentary politics, and instead on the need for a revolutionary alternative, um, how the Communist Party of Kenya approached this election. And I also saw that there was uh, the impact of imperialism as well as foreign actors became involved and 
prevented the Communist Party of Kenya from making an impact in this election. And, and just to say how the struggle will continue from here and how the Communist Party of Kenya and the Youth Communist League will continue fighting even after this election has been stolen once again by the ruling class and, and all the political power continues to be in their hands. Uh, perhaps, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, please, please, Ashley. Okay, uh, perhaps I'll start by saying that um, uh, the Communist Party of Kenya also uh, participated in the bourgeoisie elections. And actually this brought a lot of um, internal wrangles within the party. So you get uh, for any left or progressive uh, or Marxist Leninist political parties uh, to take part in bourgeoisie election is usually a tactic or majorly it's a threshold to measure how our ideas have impacted uh, the masses. However, uh, some, of, uh, some of the aspirants within the party uh, that were taking part in these elections felt it was forceful for them uh, to be in government. So it led to a faction within the party. So you get uh, some comrades last with these uh, bourgeoisie coalitions. Like in Kenya, we had two, two coalitions, that is the, the Azimio coalition and the Kenya Kwanza. So for some of our leadership, uh, some of our leaders joined the Kenya Kwanza coalition, but some of our comrades uh, felt it was um, skeptical for a Marxist Leninist uh, kind of a political party to join this uh, bourgeoisie frameworks because they are known for their populism kind of politics. So even as we were participating in these elections, uh, it's revealed uh, the clear picture of the leadership that we had. Then again, to the Kenyan masses, uh, you get that uh, the, the media has championed uh, for, uh, to perhaps uh, predict to the people who are the two horses during elections. So you'll find in this election, we only had, we had four candidates, but majorly the news headlines, uh, some of the, uh, the showcased campaigns were majorly from uh, the presidential candidate uh, for Azimio and the Kenya Kwanzaa. So you get that uh, people don't get to decide, but uh, the so-called deep state get to decide for the people whom they want to elect to power. Um, currently, uh, the IBC announced Ruto as the flag bearer for, for the presidency in Kenya. But I think Ruto is no better for Kenya. Ruto does not have progressive ideas for the people of Kenya. Ruto will not change the absolute uh, poverty that we are facing in the country. So for me, I think uh, what we are having for the next five years is again another huge struggle. It's another huge pain for the people. I think what we've always waged is uh, having people uh, maybe ensuring that these people have a good life, but since we have not been able uh, to take up power, uh, so we won't be able to shape public opinion um, as member of the CPK, but uh, that does not mean that we've stopped, um, we've, we've stopped doing what we've always done, uh, that is uh, raising the class consciousness to the people, uh, telling them the truth, about their reality, you know. So I like to leave it from there. Maybe other comrades may bring more emphasis. Maybe, maybe I can add. I can add on that. Uh, and from your question, you you talked of the ruling class, and I can say that uh, since we are, the world is experiencing the the stage, the latest stage of capitalism, which is imperialism. And we understand that uh, 
it is being ruled by finance capital through these multinationals. And I can say that in Kenya, which is still a neo-colonial state, what we, we have, for example, the two camps only represents the, the comprada bourgeoisie and they, they, they do not rule because they, they, they do not own the, the, the in, in, even if they own some a, a little fraction of the means of production, but a larger fraction of the means of production in Kenya are still owned by these Western multinationals and transnational corporations. For example, if you go to the agricultural industry, if you go to the tourism sector, in every industry, we are still, they are still owned by these transnational corporations. So the, the two camps, that is Kenya Kwanza and, and, uh, and Azimio, only represented the comprada bourgeoisie who are appendages of imperialism. And as I had mentioned earlier, you could see that even in, uh, in, 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 in their campaigns, most of them are funded by these multinational corporations, their mining corporations that are still stealing our resources in Kenya. And even if you, you looked at, uh, if you are following the, 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 the happenings at BOMAS of Kenya, you could see that we had a lot of, of European Union ambassadors, but all these people came here to look for their interests, their own interests. They were not here as observers, but they were coming to see if one of their candidates have won so that they can know now where, where is the strategic minerals, where now can we go and continue to exploit these resources. So the, 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 the two camps represented only the comprada bourgeoisie, but we are still, the ruling class is still the international bourgeoisie because they, they, they rule through the means of finance capital. And we have seen that the World Bank and the IMF, even after Ruto has taken, I think uh, it won't take months until you hear that now Kenya has taken another loan from the IMF. So the, the process is still cyclical and it's still continuous. And these people will continue to rule us, but they are, they are using their local stooges, who are the Kenya Kwanza Brigade and the Azimio, to continue to, to rule the people. So these are just appendages of imperialism and the ruling class in the neo-colonial state. And this is not an exception just in Kenya. It, it is happening everywhere in Africa. They are putting puppet governments to, to continue exploiting our resources. And the IMF and the World Bank has ensured that this has continued for, for, for decades now. So even after Ruto has taken power, nothing is going to change because we are still going to subscribe to the same neoliberal policies where we are going to see a lot of public expenditure being cut. We are going to see more private institution coming in. So this, this, there's no sign of hope for Kenya and until we have another socialist alternative. And what we can win, as I said earlier, is just some mere reforms, but th those are not what we want because we want to completely abolish the system. Thank you. Maybe to continue with where my comrade chair has left. You see, comrade, uh, the country, uh, the country has been choking from structural unemployment, uh, displacement of, of of a lot of uh, demolitions, uh, extrajudicial killing. Uh, the 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 healthcare system uh, has totally failed, and. Uh, uh, at the same time, the members of the political class were on a vote-seeking mission uh, ahead of the polls. And you see, as, as, the, as Marxists, then we, we needed uh, a prescription of the correct cure that, we, that depended on uh, a rigorous analysis of, of uh, our reality. And one of the things you, you realize from the elections that we just had that there was a uh, the populist progressive rhetoric which was embraced by the bourgeois in 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 in, in this election 
of course, you see the former prime minister uh, was vying under a banner of Azimio la Umoja. And you'd see Moli Munyerere uh, through Tanu had done uh, the Azimio la Arusha, the Arusha declaration or uh, bringing forth the policy of Ujamaa. And in Raila's Azimio, you'll note the similarity. Now he was promising social justice and universal healthcare. And uh, maybe the most ambitious was his, his social wel welfare agenda, where he had promised to, to give 6,000 per month to the neediest uh, families in the, in the country. Yeah. And you, you look at his competitor, Ruto on the other side, has historical and uh, ideological limitations. You see, uh, you see, you trace his his political history. He was part of the youth for Kanu, who vehemently defended the dictatorship of the late president uh, Moi, and the group was even largely accused of being architects in the ethnic violence that was directed at a particular ethnic group in the Rift Valley region and you see he then comes with with a, a bottom-up economic rhetoric that uh, has resonated uh, very very easily with with uh, the masses so top of it uh, most importantly is that he has refused to acknowledge that he is a political orphan of the moi dynasty and also part of the comprendo bourgeois that can be characterized characterized as as dynasties um, in the country. So of course, during this election, we experienced coalition politics, uh, which were led by cliques of right wing stooges who are determined to cling to their privileges. So it was a war of billionaires. Uh, uh, who had now degenerated the slogans of the revolutionary proletariat into opportunistic power seeking uh, tactics, you know? And I think someone who captures this well is uh, Rodney when he says that uh, uh, a black man ruling a dependent state within the imperialist system had no, he was just an agent of the, of the whites uh, who was just maintaining the the imperialist way of things. So you see, the correct analysis of our society is that we are still uh, we are still facing the obstacles of uh, the neo-colonial state and uh, its local uh, comprendo bourgeois class, who have formed the 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 the, the ruling uh, class. And you've seen that if uh, this progressive uh, uh, opportunistic uh, use of um, revolutionary terms and, 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 and progressive terminologies uh, even brought confusion among the, the ranks of, of, of the left. And as my comrade has uh, co correctly put it, that even in the party, it brought divisions uh, in the party. And uh, she has talked of, uh, of, of, of our comrades who decided uh, to join um, one side uh, of, 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 of this clique. And uh, I call them former comrades because of course, comradeship is not a permanent condition. And when they decide to take opportunistic lines uh, and uh, you know for a party, like uh, the Communist Party, or uh, specifically uh, CPK, then uh, we have the party line and uh, the party organizational principle, uh, the notion of democratic uh, centralism, which does not mean subservience of, uh, or, uh, for, for subserv subservience of, to leadership and for closure of debate. So of course, these are the things that we, we have seen uh, in this uh, election. So there is no, 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 no side that was uh, taking a stand uh, against the, the establishment or uh, 
or, or taking a stand for the establishment of a new society. So just uh, people talking of a modification of, 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 of whatever we have and not the, real, the realization of, of socialism, but not even attempts to reform it. I wouldn't even call them attempts to, to reform it. So of course, again, you are talked of, of, of potential for violence to continue. We've seen already, already uh, by the time the, the elections were announced, uh, you know, people, people, people came out, uh, some people, uh, So you so you realize uh, as I've highlighted uh, these uh, issues mm -hmm. that uh, are coming up in 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 in, in our election, you know. And uh, my comrade Ashlin also talked about our attitude as the left towards uh, the election. And as 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 our comrade has correctly put it, that we again faced a lot of uh, of challenges even fielding uh, candidates in 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 this election but of course our our, our attitude uh, in this election and uh, you will realize that we now have a constitution that uh, has allowed us to organize overtly and therefore we can form a communist party which could not happen before the communists were suppressed and uh, and many were forced to flee the country. Now we have a party. We can organize. We can also participate in, in, in the bourgeois election. Uh, and uh, anytime we we participate in the in the bourgeois elections, our 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 main task is first of all to test our organizing because we are always with the masses. We are always with the communities. We want to know. Uh, how we want to test our organizing. And also, again, this is a time to highlight, uh, to use that platform to highlight how the system has failed, uh, how, how the, the system has continually uh, continued to fail our people and the need for an alternative. And if you, if you look at the constitution of the party, then you have a minimum program and also a maximum uh, program and in the minimum program, as Comrade Chair had put, then this is a there 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 are reforms that, of course, we we can achieve where whenever we 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 are able to get this elective position, but not to substitute it with class struggle. Yeah. So. I think I think I think I can stop there. Allow my another comrade to jump in. Thanks so much, comrade. And I, I wanted to just ask from this for a little bit as well. I had mentioned um, in the in the question, but I saw that there were a lot of there was a lot of discussion about the role specifically of American imperialism within the election and the role of interference of the American state through the embassy. Um, and the control that the U.S. has over Kenyan politics. Of course, Kenya is a, a prime base for imperialist control in East Africa for the United States. But I wonder if you could comment a little bit on how the U.S. in particular is sort of exerting its control through this election. And also maybe to say, uh, you know, how, the, how imperialism sort of masks itself and doesn't allow the average people to understand the extent of its control how now there will be, uh, as as Comrade Brian mentioned, there will be a circus over the election now, and many people don't understand that the election is really controlled by the imperialist powers, and there's very little sort of agency for people to uh, independently fight um, for independence when there is such a neo-colonial control over the state, particularly by the United States of America.
and anyone who wants to jump in on that question. Oh yeah, well, um, uh, that is uh, that is well noted, and uh, it's a um, it, it, it's a very worth well observation uh, because uh, we have had uh, uh, imperialist interference in the political developments of uh, of of, uh, of uh, countries, especially in Africa and the, in the Middle East, uh, particularly in Kenya, we uh, find uh, that you know it is uh, you know that that Kenya is one of the one of the backyards of uh, imperialism. Uh, formerly mentioned by my comrade Moivu, who says that uh, we host a number of big corporations, you know, that fund these politicians. And um, apart from funding these politicians, you know, there is also a, a cost that comes with uh, funding these politicians in their campaigns. Because uh, one of the things that uh, we experience, especially during campaigns, is that, uh, you know, the economy, the, 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 there is, a, you know, a very big flashback, especially on the economy. Like uh, uh, in the recent times, the people have been con complaining about food because, uh, you know, there is a, there is a, there is a, there is an effect on, uh, you know, what uh, this foreign funding and, uh, of course, the looting happens. And uh, because uh, once they fund you and uh, you, you manage to get to the presidency, then it means supporting their big corporations and supporting imperialist interests, especially in Kenya, uh, particularly the American, uh, the Americans, the, the, the American state and the and the and the NATO formation. You know, they have established, uh, you know, a number of uh, very many military, you know, very many uh, military and naval bases in Kenya. You know, since independence. And uh, you know, uh, establishing military or naval bases in uh, a, a, a free country means uh, you know, in a, and uh, that freedom you know comes in quotes because uh, what we say is that we, you know we we got sham independence. So establishing these uh, NATO, uh, the, the, these NATO naval and military bases in your country is uh, first of all uh, you know political interference. And uh, in the U.S., uh, we got a statement before we did the elections that uh, they are anticipating uh, or uh, you know they, 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 they well, from the analysis is that uh, you know they expected violence in uh, uh, you know in uh, in some of the strongholds of uh, of these uh, you know, of these two political factions and um, you know that meant that uh, you know that uh, you know as a, as a pre analysis it also meant that you know it was propaganda it was western propaganda you know targeted towards uh, targeted towards maybe uh, sparkling violence or maybe uh, sparkling a sense of uh, tension you know political tension within these uh, within these uh, towns and uh, cities and um, you know what we have experienced is that uh, kenyans are uh, you know are, 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 are you know um, are, are, uh, even if uh, not advanced to the to, to, to the point that they understand uh, you know about the class differences and the imperialist interference in Kenya. At least they have uh, moved from, uh, you know, they have moved from the point of uh, of 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 uh, um, a bourgeois, you know, a, 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 you know, a bourgeois consciousness that is. Uh, that is, uh, you know, that is placed on them. But uh, quite a large uh, population doesn't still understand the the imperialist, uh, the, you know, the imperialist um, uh, contributions in the Kenyan elections and, uh, in fact, in the interference. And uh, yeah, and uh, I, I'm not, I've not heard from the observers. But I think, uh, you know, a statement from the observers will, uh, you know, will 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 send a very big message. Yes. Maybe and, um, to add on that. Oh, sorry. Okay, thank you, comrade. Um, and I think uh, obviously because violence forms part of the intrigue of bourgeois politics, of course, with the ruling class, um, you know, uh, fighting to maintain their interest and with the imperialist nations. In this case, America, Britain, say France, also struggling to uh, through their compradors to maintain their interest within uh, Kenya and Africa as, as, a, as a continent wholly as a continent. And of course, uh, here in Kenya, when we see what Comrade Brian has been talking about, we have structural violence that has been going on. And you know, when you have structural violence, even with um, spontaneous struggles that are detached from a uh, revolutionary organizing, at least class struggle, um, they continue to benefit from it because even with, uh, with spontaneous struggles, now what happens is the case of Sri Lanka, for example, where they're going to come in and give more funding to rescue the situation. So when they spar violence, even here in Kenya, they don't spar violence with those kind of sentiments that they make on Twitter, knowing very well when an American embassy or an American ambassador to Kenya makes such um, a comment, 
it sounds like a slight comment, but it actually spurs a lot of violence to people. And you know, when they spur violence, they stand to gain from chaos. You know, the more chaos there is, the more advantage they have to impose their neoliberal policies through, 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 um, through IMF loans and World Bank. And as they continue to do that, then the country also continues to, to get poorer and people continue to struggle. But um, of course, the task even in uh, communist organizing is that the task is to conscientize uh, continually. And you know, the back lies with political education because as we go on, um, we must be able to connect uh, these um, you know, imperialist uh, formations with uh, the continuous violence that is going on within our nations, yes. My ego comment. Oh, thank you. And on that question, I wanted to add on that question of how imperialists have interfered uh, in Kenya, and this is not precisely on this election period, but even in our political organization, is that they've been using another strategy of non-governmental, the so-called non-governmental organizations. But you can, if you are keen enough, you'll see that these NGOs or the non-governmental organization are not really non-governmental because they 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 have their funding from the United States. They have they are funding from the European countries. So they only help to serve those exact nations. So they are not really non-governmental organization. And what these NGOs have done is that they've tried to fragment our struggles. For example, you'll find that one NGO is focusing on environment or on ecological justice. The other one is focusing on feminism. The other one is focusing on maybe food security. And all these fragments of the society which have been caused by capitalism. So what they've done is that they've diluted that class struggle and they've only put people into fragments to see that this is the problem instead of understanding that all these problems have arisen from the conditions of this mode of production that we, we have adopted. So these NGOs, these NGOs have even gone into the progressive. Uh, the progressive movements in our society. And they, they've even bought some of uh, the most progressive people so that they can, they can dilute or depoliticize them so that they, their only struggle is about uh, maybe environment. They are just acting and they are not revolutionaries. So that is another strategy that the imperialists have been using in Kenya. Thank you. Thanks so much, comrades. And would anyone else like to comment on that question? Yeah, comrade. Uh, I'd like to add on maybe the imposition of Western democracy. We find that um, in one way or another, what is happening in Kenya is um, the politicians are championing for few political parties um, to to be the alpha and omega during the elections and majorly these politicians uh, use the word uh, you know in the US we have only two um, political parties that is the Republican and the Democratic Party so similarly in Kenya that should be the outlook uh, during um, each and every uh, other general election. So you get this time round in Kenya, we had only two coalitions that were that had two horses for the presidential uh, seat. So you get we had the Azimio, and so this is what they are giving Kenyans. So Kenyans have to choose from uh, to choose candidates from those two coalitions. So these other political parties have been suppressed or have been, uh, uh, they face state repression so that they cannot come up. That's, is, that's why you get that the Communist Party of Kenya or some comrades from the Communist Party of Kenya saw it wise to join or to liaise with the Kenya Kwanzaa coalition because uh, they were thinking if we are not part of the Kenya Kwanzaa coalition, uh, actually we are not participating in the election. So another thing also is the Western propaganda. You get that, um, how we like, 
uh, the, this, uh, when I talk about Western propaganda, you know, communists are usually um, referred to as anti-populist. But what we desire is populism that's, that is driven with true knowledge, telling people the truth, telling people uh, their material reality. But what is happening in Kenya even during campaign is it's just um, mere politics uh, that is based on ethnicity and a lot of insults. So you get most of these people uh, roam around during campaign season, majorly whipping up tribal sentiments to the people. So this is what is making uh, maybe blinding Kenyans not to see that there is there is more to our elections. Uh, I think that is what I can add on that. Thank you, comrade. Thanks so much, comrades. I wanted to just ask two more questions. And, and the next one is just asking about how you as young people all came to Marxism, the su subject we're very interested in in talking to young people across the world and asking about how we can connect Marxism and communism to the youth today, because it seems so hard sometimes to connect uh, these concepts to young people, but then at other times, you know, young people have so much energy and enthusiasm for Marxism as students um, and as cadres. So I wanted to ask about that and how, especially you engage with new young members who would like to join the Young Communist League what literature you know would you have them read what kind of party tactics and discipline would you apply um, and the organizational theory to try and get young people to commit because it is so hard sometimes in this age when people can feel very uh, disconnected and, and unengaged with revolutionary politics to get people to commit as well to a even beyond uh, just social media and, and really like a practical engagement with politics. So I'm very curious about this. Uh, thanks, comrade. And um, I, I think uh, from, um, from my point of analysis is that uh, we all find ourselves into uh, political organizing uh, you know, borrowing from um, uh, borrowing from uh, Comrade Howard Zinn, who said that uh, all social organizing or so all uh, social movements are inspired by a state of hopelessness, you know, within the society. And uh, it's not different because also in Kenya and uh, most of us, you know, are moved by the experiences because and uh, the conditions, because you look at the Kenyan society, the class contradiction is, uh, you know, is, is very exposed and the, the class contradictions are uh, very acute that uh, you know you don't have to you know you don't have to 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 to, to, to go to school or, uh, or you know or or or, or uh, analyze the conditions so deeply you know there are things that uh, you know are are very clear so most of us are inspired by you know these conditions and uh, from where we come from you know uh, there, there is that inspiration of uh, poverty of hopelessness of uh, of of maybe of maybe uh, uh, state suppression you know uh, economic uh, exploitation so all these things you know uh, bring us uh, everyone inspired by a particular element uh, in uh, you know in in the class struggle and that is how we find ourselves into organizing and uh, slowly by slowly uh, dialectically with the development of the society Comrades also uh, develop, you know, in a certain, you know, uh, yeah, you know, uh, in you know, uh, in, a, in in a certain approach. And uh, in the Young Communist League, we have adopted a political program. And uh, my comrade also uh, had mentioned about the maximum and minimum program, which is guided by, uh, you know, uh, uh, which is guided by an alloy of uh, theory and practice. And uh, you know, so we engage in a Marxist-Leninist theory, uh, which uh, and incorporates our minimum, pro uh, which uh, our maximum program. And uh, in our organizations, we are organizing cells in uh, various cells. And in these cells, uh, you know, we get uh, to induct comrades. Uh, you know, after comrades uh, express interest, we uh, we 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 we. 
we recruit them in our in our in, in our mass organization and from the mass organization uh, we systematically you know based on regions and uh, availability we place them into cells or even they can form cells themselves you know and from the cells uh, from the cells you know cells are the are, are the most basic organizations and uh, you know we advance to the constituency level to the county level and to the national level um, there is a declaration that our members feel because of amazing currently yeah, is uh, overt. Um, so uh, we are uh, currently into mass uh, recruitment and, uh, you know, for the formation of cells. And um, uh, we are also guided by the principles of, uh, you know, uh, and uh, we, of course, draw our inspiration from the Communist Party of Kenya uh, ideologically and, uh, of course, uh, our political in inclinations. Um, uh, but uh, we still exist as an autonomous organization which uh, makes its policies. We have a constitution that guides us and of course a code of conduct. Thank you. Thanks, comrade. And any other comrades who'd like to engage with that question? No problem. So with that question as well, maybe I, I can also thank you for the answer, Comrade Brandon. I would just like to ask each of you um, to provide a little on that question with respect to name, you know, one book or one piece of literature that you read that kind of got you into Marxism um, and, and engaged into communism. And that's just a way of saying what literature kind of appeals to people now um, that can kind of get people engaged into communism. So. I hope it's not too much to ask if everybody could just say one book or one text that they find very compelling that got them uh, engaged in communism. This book by Ngugi Wadiyongo, it's called it's called I Will Marry When I Want, and his analysis of uh, the, the old colonial condition is what drew me to, to, to the attention of Marxist analysis. And then when I read uh, of how he was arrested for, for teaching Marxism, I wanted to know what is this Marxism that will make one be arrested, or what is this Marxism that will will make the government want to ban it why is it being banned so i wanted to 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 read more about marxism and that is how i also interacted with other marxist materials and then i got into the communist party of kenya where it has a study uh, an educational program that goes for months where you are where you interact with different marxist materials and that is how i was baptized into marxism Thanks so much, Comrade. That's a great answer and a great book as well. Um, there's also, uh, just to add, uh, which I, I think I didn't add earlier, is that uh, there's also the Walter Rodney School Kenya, which uh, interacts with different writings of uh, Walter Rodney and of course gains inspiration with his mode of organizing, being that he was an intellectual and revolutionary in, um, in equal measure. And of course, uh, his ways of linking um, you know, his intellectual uh, advancement with uh, organizing within different societies in Jamaica and in, in Africa. And uh, my book, I think, is The Prison Notebook by um, Maina Wakenyati, also a Kenyan uh, historian, who's written on uh, different uh, progressive struggles of uh, Seda Mau Mau and the struggle of uh, underground organizing, uh, underground organizations here in Kenya. So, um, yes. And of course, there is what Comrade Maivu has talked about, which is the curriculum of the Communist Party. For me, thanks, Comrade. Uh, for me, I first studied uh, a book by Shiraz on Pio Gama Pinto, Kenyans and Sang Mataya. And uh, I was introduced to this man, Pinto. And uh, from my reading, I realized that Pinto was a communist, and that was one of the reasons Pinto was very hated by the establishment at that time. And therefore, I wanted to understand 
uh, why why is the state uh, uh, suppressing uh, this uh, this man uh, Pinto uh, for being a communist? And therefore, again, I got to read uh, a text, uh, the book by Professor Miner, uh, a prison notebook. And again, I realized this minor was a Marxist, a Marxist professor at the university, and he was only jailed for doing research on history, on the history of, 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 of Mau Mau struggle. And uh, that got me even more interested to understand Marxism and these communists. And at the time, he was still at the university, and my comrade, uh, my comrade wa Waringa, was 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 uh, our leader uh, at the time at the at the university, and therefore we we could have these conversations about socialism, but we were not clear on what socialism was, yeah. Because the closest will come was a uh, uh, mm, social 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 justice organizations, which 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 at the time were looking very progressive, but we were very interested in a party that was talking about these things and organizing along that line. And that is what led us to the Communist Party of Kenya. And I remember the first time I entered uh, the party, the party premises, there was a Pinto's portrait on the wall. And I knew, ah, this is, uh, this is where I wanted to be. And of course, I was enrolled in the studies, in the party, in the study circles. And uh, that was uh, back in 2020, I think, start of 2020. Yeah. And we've been engaged in, 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 in consistent study ever since. And through that, we've been able to interact with a lot of documents and also now practice was we came now to realize that it was not just about study that we have to, we had now to go into our communities and now put into practice the theory the revolutionary theories that we had been studying and we've seen we, we've seen a lot happen through the organizing that we've been doing yeah, and through the sharpening of, of, of contradiction yeah and these stories, uh, thank you, thank you, Conrad, the, the Conrad Secretary of Ideology. These stories are, uh, you know, are interesting, uh, uh, you know, uh, are always interesting as the first time. So I think um, uh, myself, uh, I, I, I just, I, I'm a development of uh, grassroots organizations and mostly uh, social movements, you know, just an uh, inspiration of, uh, you know, of a mixture of uh, Howard Zinn and, uh, and, and Walter Rodney. And so I think uh, my book, and uh, you know, the book that uh, I, I, you know, that uh, got me to, you know, to to, to reading, were, you know, were inspired by uh, revolutionaries such as uh, Issa Shivji on, uh, you know, on the NGO discourses, you know. But uh, then I developed to uh, more Marxist literature, you know, uh, uh, you know, consecutively. And uh, when I met this book, How Europe Underdeveloped Africa by Walter Rodney was a great uh, inspiration to, you know, to the, you know, to the Marxist kind of analysis and the dialectical kind of uh, an, uh, an analyzing the society. But then in the study circles, that is uh, where I drew my best experience in uh, terms of uh, Marxist literature. And, uh, you know, very special is that um, uh, the book by Ho Chi Minh on the path that led me to Marxism Leninism is uh, a great inspiration. And of course, there are more of the works of uh, Stalin and uh, Comrade Lenin, and uh, of course, Comrade, uh, Comrade Mao. Fantastic. That's amazing to hear, Comrades, and, and to hear all of the different works, and especially to hear Walter Rodney, who I think a lot of people are, are reviving today and definitely reading more of and engaging with more is incredible. Well, that, you know, those were my main sort of questions. I, I have one final question, and then I, I want to thank you all for taking so much of your time to speak with me. I really appreciate it. My final question would just be, and, and anyone who wants to jump in, feel free to, on the future of communism in Kenya and the optimism that you all have. It's a question that I like to ask anybody that I talk to who's undertaking struggle right now. 
which is the kind of hope and optimism you have rather than a, a cynicism or pessimism um, and kind of the view that the struggle will win in the end, no matter what it takes. Where does the struggle go from here? And now that this election has occurred, it seems that there will be a continued sort of engagement in, in bourgeois politics. Is there a way to jump out of that and to get people engaged and say, bourgeois politics is not going to save us. We have to have revolutionary politics. What I can say is that we have pessimism of hope and optimism of the will. And uh, the socialist road is a very long one. And uh, we cannot we cannot postulate when this thing, this revolution will happen. But what we need to do is continue to organize, continue to, to struggle and to continue to intensify the struggle among the masters. Thank you, comrade. Any anyone else? Any other comments like to add on to that question? Yes, comrade. Um, I think most of the of the progressive organizations or left political parties are known for their underground work, and even as we participated in the Pujose election. I think uh, that was not our strategy. And our strategy majorly is to fight for a human society uh, where people can live uh, dignified lives. So I think the Young Communist League uh, being a Marxist Leninist organization, uh, which derives is um, strength politically and ideologically from CPK and other um, Marxist-Leninist organization worldwide has a huge task of majorly educating, sensitizing, and also reintroducing uh, scientific ideas to the Kenyan population. So our main goal is to bring about uh, uh, public, uh, public opinion or to shape public opinion opinion of the Kenyan people, because change is gradual. Uh, most of the Kenyan people are reactionary. So even when we tell them about our ideas, uh, they think that we are weird because they, they look at us uh, differently. So what we want to do is to make them understand and also make them uh, maybe cautious or question uh, the kind of lies they are living or uh, the conditions that they have been forced to live with, um, especially the social and economic problems. So once we do this, uh, I'm sure there is life uh, for communism to thrive in the Kenyan society. Thank you so much. And to take up from my comrade Ashley, um, the truth, uh, the actual fact is that the fall of uh, capitalism is inevitable. So um, the only task that we have as Comrade Moaibu has said is to continually organize towards the fall of uh, capitalism. And you know, in this society being that, um, you know, as, as, um, as, uh, as the bourgeois outlook continues to advance, the more chances or at least the more tasks or the more work that the communist parties have in terms of, um, you know, sharpening the contradictions that continually arise. And of course, um, Socialism is literally the only alternative. And um, if people don't take up the task and don't uh, you know, continually read and get themselves motivated to continue with the struggle, they'll have failed in our generational task. So um, you know, historically we've been tasked and our generation has also been tasked to continually organize towards the fall of capitalism. And of course, that is in our hands and we cannot let it go. And I think the most primary uh, of all is to establish a vanguard party, you know, one that, uh, you know, draws inspiration from a certain ideological leaning. And to ours, uh, we are Marxist Leninists, which, uh, you know, incorporates both the uh, party building and uh, propaganda as, uh, you know, the two uh, main dimensions of organizing. 
and uh, of course in achieving that we shall utilize or uh, tactics you know that uh, you know are uh, are, are uh, you know are within our reach you know to uh, actualize uh, you know a, a vanguard uh, communist political party in 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 uh, in, in Kenya and uh, of course uh, you know it will act as the first one in east africa also maybe to Sorry. to add on that there's been there's been this question of uh, people have been saying that uh, communism and socialism failed when with the with the with the dissolution of the soviet system but we can see that from history how we passed from all these different mode of production from communalism to slavery from slavery to feudalism from feudalism to capitalism they've happened on a long range of, of a period of time. And we can see that even the, the, the bourgeois revolutions happened since the 15th century to now the 18th century. And the first socialist revolution which happened in the 19th century, that was the French Revolution. And even the October Revolution of the Russia, those were just revolutionary advances. And it doesn't mean that now we can say that now socialism has, has failed. No, we are fighting a system that is five centuries old. So it may take time, but we, we need to continue organizing our masses. We need to continue building the vanguard party of the masses and giving it a correct mass line. Thank you. Thanks so much comrades and Yes, uh, can you hear if you'd like to add that? Sorry, comrade, sorry. Uh, I agree with, 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 with what my comrades uh, are saying about uh, the future. But uh, of course, Lenin tells us that there are decades where nothing happened and there are weeks where decades happen. And of course, in and as as we advance uh, after the election of course our pre our present conditions require a, a, a true opposition party and when i say a true op opposition party i mean a party that is ideologically different from the parties that are currently dominating yeah and you realize of uh, also the ideas that our masses have these are the ideas of the ruling classes, and these are the ideas which are propagated by the dominant uh, parties, which are also co controlling the, the political power. So for us, there's no justification, ideological one, to, for us to entertain these bourgeois ethnic barrels. And that is why, again, I've had my comrades talk about building a vanguard. So not acknowledging this, uh, then we'll be taking an opportunistic line and uh, selling the interest of the masses, you know? So you realize that now that uh, the, the, we, we are done with elections, then we, we, as we've said, we go back to, to party building. This means that for our candidates who are able to participate, this was also an exercise to recruit members in the party. Yeah, and so we embark on 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 a program of 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 putting them into study cells and then uh, engaging uh, no no the study so that at least they are they are ideologically clear and they understand the party position on 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 different issues and also continue to highlight you see. Uh, the contradictions that uh, are are in our in 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 in, in our current system. I, uh, I'll use an example of COVID, which of course exposed the failure of of of, of the capitalist state. And of course, as cadres in the party, then we go back to the masses and highlight these contradictions and tell them about the alternative, which is socialism. And that is why in the party we say that Suluhu knew socialist, that the solution is socialism. And for us, we will do our part today. And uh, that is a, 
that is our all to i think we may have lost uh the comrade again um but i am wondering if we can conclude i don't know if the comrade may have had more to add on to that or if we should wait or if we should just conclude the interview. I can just conclude here. So I wanted to say thank you to everyone who was able to participate. Uh, comrades, I really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, thank you all so much for joining. We'll do a future discussion like this with all members of the Young Kenyan, uh, the Kenyan Young Communist League. Um, and discuss different topics in the future, such as you know, further elaborating on imperialism or the status of the cadre in a revolutionary party. So thank you all so much, comrades. I really appreciate it. Pleasure speaking with you. Bye-bye, comrades. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>